Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Katie Sue Tillman. I'm a licensed psychologist and registered play therapist. Uh, today I'm going to be giving you a helpful hint for teleplay therapy. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Um, this is going to be a starting helpful hint for people who are doing physical play therapy with children online, also known as teleplay therapy. So with physical play therapy, we are actually doing things that we would be doing in our office. So we're using physical toys, physical miniatures. On our side of the computer here is therapist, and kids are using physical toys and manipulatives that they have in their homes or in their locations on their side of the computer. So I've gotten some inquiries asking, how do you do that? <laughs> so how do you actually set that up? And so I'm just going to give you one helpful hint for getting started with that today. So there are lots of complex ways to do that, but let's get started with an easy way. So I like to kind of think of things in, in ways that we can make kind of quick, easy changes without trying to break the bank. Now, as you get more specialized, you can invest in things and, you know, can kind of figure out, okay, I really like this, so I am going to invest in a more complicated or more expensive way to do so. Um, but for now, I think it's important to try things out, see what works for you and for the kiddos that you see, uh, and to go from there. So I have a box from <laughs> a very famous kind of a huge, uh, wholesale kind of store. Uh, so this is a, a photo box of sorts, I believe, when people had kept printed photos. Uh, it's about seven inches tall. Um, and I'm going to show you what happens when I do this. So this is, you can kind of see the box. Um, and I've used multiple different size boxes, I'm not trying to promote any products here. I've used this box. You can see um, with comparison to my hand about how tall that is. I did measure it, um, I've kind of forgotten. It doesn't really matter the size. So I've got this box here that I've used before. Um, I have another box I'll pull up for you. Um, this box I've used, I'm not advocating for this particular product or anything like that. So please don't think so. Um, but anyhow, I, this box I stopped using because it's too thin. Um, and I'll tell you why in a second. So. Track with me for a second, guys. So here's the box. Tell me when you can't see the box anymore. Down, 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 rolling down, down, down. Hmm. If you can kind of still see the top of the box. Now, right now I have my laptop and my laptop is placed on top of um, a wobbly right now, I need to tighten it, <laughs> but it's a place on top of a high top um, end table. So the end table, I would say um, if you have couches, just regular size couches, um, my end table is about six inches higher than um, you know the armrest of uh, a couch would be. So it's a high surface. I typically do um, physical play therapy on the floor, um, but I do have some kiddos who need some more containment. So we do do play therapy like this. It's a good way to start uh, doing physical play therapy uh, so that you can be comfortable, the kids can be comfortable, and then you can kind of spread out more and I will do other videos on that. But this is just a simple uh, little trick. So tip rather. So, okay, so we've got this really cool box and I'm really excited about this because um, it's just really helped therapy progress. Um, and it was one of the earliest things that I came across. So anyhow, you've got this box. Now you can still see the box. So it's not completely realistic for a play. So at this point, what I wanna do is I tilt my laptop and I do this a lot with kids to kind of help them position it just so they know that I can see everything that they're doing and I can see everything um, and it's helpful for therapy. So I'm gonna tilt the laptop. If I tilt it down, you see more of the box. And that's not what I want. Because the secret is I wanna use this to put toys on. So that I'm not holding all the toys and my arm is not getting strained and that doesn't become my focus instead of the kiddo that I'm working with. So I'm gonna push the laptop back. Still see the box, still see the box. Now you can see me clearly. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take out some of my miniatures. So. I'm going to start with, and I just brought a couple of things with me, um, you know, to this little location right here. So I'm going to put, I've got a king up here. So I've got the king here. Now you can see the king pretty well, I think. I'm looking, I'm just looking at my screen, but I can see the king and he's right there. Um, and I believe I've got a couple others. Let's see. Um, I have got a little, I've got the horse. Um, so, you know, one of the horses and let's see, I've got one knight here. And let's see, oh, we've got, let's see, we've got the king and the queen. And we know in play therapy that the kids can refer to anything however they would like to refer to it. 
Um, you know, but by doing this, I'm going to tell you the really cool things that have come up, um, and not in any identifying sort of way, but just in really helpful ways. So and then we've got the night up here. So what I do is I let kids summon, yeah, for lack of a better word, uh, different characters that they want. So um, I have, you know, peg dolls that are judges um, and they've been used as officers or, or I have army men, you know, all sorts of anything that we would have in our play therapy room. I end up using a lot of my sand tray miniatures. Um, you know, for play therapy, uh, for teleplay therapy, uh, because I can put them all out here. Um, so I do have kids, you know, who, you know, having a whole room set up with lots of different, uh, you know, toys that we've selected is overwhelming in their home. Um, and I do have to work on that physical and uh, emotional containment. So doing this is a containment. Um, it's a way to start doing physical play therapy by containing it. So we'll, you know, they will be sitting at a table, I will be sitting at a table. Um, I can even have them push their laptops back further. Um, that gives us more scenery. Um, and I'm gonna go into that next time though, because I'm gonna show you, how, well, not next time, but in another video, I'm gonna show you how you can actually create an entire world like this. But this allows it so that the kids can, you know, talk, their, their miniatures can talk to mine and I can voice them and we can go back and forth. Uh, you know, there are lots and lots of creative ways that end, the ways don't end. And it's just really exciting to be able to do this. And sometimes the kids will have a little board um, and have them do voices, but the kids can see the toys. Um, and, you know, if we're getting played into it and I just can mirror back what they're doing. So a lot of times kids will play and when they're talking, you know, and doing the voices and moving stuff forward and blah, blah, blah. And I can't believe that blah, blah, blah. When they're doing those things, they're in the picture and they want me on camera doing the same thing. However, sometimes I've noticed that kids don't want me in the picture uh, and they want me in and out. Sometimes they want it to just be the characters. So then I've really got to move these guys closer and sometimes I actually have to shift and move the camera over a little bit. Um, and I'll show, I'm actually going to show that in a different video because it's a higher tech kind of thing. I've gotten a little bit off script. So I just wanted to let you know, this is really, I'm going to recap it really quickly because I know that I went a little bit off topic. Um, but just to let you know, the way that it works is you have just a box of any size. Um, you want to make sure that it's a deep enough that the toys won't fall off um, because I will show you really quickly what happens when they're not deep enough. <laughs> um, and kids will go with you and they're very flexible and kind. Um, so I've got this box down, 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 down. You can't see it. Um, and what would happen is I would be interacting with kids and, and setting things up and, you know, they're not the most stable of characters. Um, and, you know, I would put one up and get it up. And as I'm getting, you know, one set up, and I'd have to go, oops, they fell off, <laughs> and the kids would start laughing. Um, so, you know, you just want to make sure that it's, you know, definitely wide enough to do that. So just to recap, a one way of doing physical play therapy, of getting started doing physical play therapy, which means you're using toys here, and they're using toys there, um, you know, one way of doing that, again, and this can be adapted for child-centered stuff too as well, um, one way of doing this is, you know, having a box with enough you know, with at the top, placing it so that the child can't see it. Um, and they can see you set it up. It doesn't ruin any of it for them. Um, and then, you know, allowing, you know, for the creation of the space that they need in order to play. So on that note, I'll leave you with the queen and the horse. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short, well, intended to be short <laughs> tidbit of a video. And again, please like this video and subscribe, subscribe if you're interested in getting more information, more tidbits of information on teleplay therapy.